but one of the important things when you do is uh, when we do ship these things, they get tussled around a little bit by FedEx, uh, no big deal, but some of the soil might jar loose from the grow pot and uh, it might be loose in the box. And if you're taking this uh, and getting it out in your house, you want your floors to be protected, so make sure you get a tarp. Um, that's where you want to start. So you want to start with the box on the tarp and then open her up. Alright, Joe. Okay. So first thing we're gonna do sharp knife. There's a seam here, these telescoping boxes. It's uh you can get it done with one person, uh, but it is uh, generally a two person job. got some stabilizers in here so if this thing gets a little uh, cattywampus during shipping it won't collapse on itself uh, take any of the package of material out and all this stuff can be recycled um, it'll come in a uh, in a sleeve so we're using as much recycled material as we can we've got these uh, paper sleeves uh, sometimes they'll come in uh, green sleeves with netting uh, but either way it's to protect the plant during shipping so what we recommend you do further is, yeah, take that out. Another one out? Yep. You got it right there. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Now we want to pop the bottom of this box open. Majesty palm, uh, grown in uh, in South Florida. It's uh, native to Mad Madagascar, little island off the east coast of Africa. Not many of them are still in the wild, but uh, they're widely cultivated in the United States and available uh, right now on our website. Um, Joe, uh, yes, you want to get the uh, the packing material out? Yeah. So it comes with some green moss. These, are, these items, you can get the plant by itself, and you can get these other items. They're ordered separately, but easily added to your cart when you're ordering online. You got green moss there. You got a nice ring for plant sure system. Open this. Yeah. And it's almost set up. The only uh, part you guys need to do at home is just put the ring inside the liner, right? It will, if you already shoot the corner for it, the place for the for the plant, just put it in there. Just shoot these. You're gonna put it inside a container so it looks Joe, let me better mention, that way. Let me mention something right now. Yep, yep. So Joe's showing you how to set it up on our sub irrigation system. We got the ring down there, and we got the wicks, and that creates a reservoir the plant can drink and water itself. If you order it without the plant to sure system, you'll get the plant in the grow pot. It won't have the wicks and it won't have the ring, but it will come with the liner. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, so really easy. You just put it in here. The most important step is just don't let the wig be out of the liner. It's really important to put them down here, you know, lay them on the side. Okay and then try to put it right in the middle of the container so that way the plant won't start leaning uh, to any kind of corner so it's, it goes straight up, okay? And uh, after this, it's as easy as just starting with the, with the water. Well, let's get this off real quick. Yep. So, 
So again, uh, depending on how it was handled uh, in transit, uh, some of the soil might have jarred loose. All you got to do is take and push the soil down, pack it in. If it's loose, this has got a nice tight root ball, so it's in pretty good shape. It traveled all the way from our shop over to here, so not much tussling. Uh, but as you can imagine, um, on a FedEx truck, uh, the soil might uh, loosen up a little bit. So it's important to, to press it back down. And, oh, look what I got in here. There's Joe. Okay, so when the guy, um, when this thing shows up on your doorstep, um, depending on how long it's been in transit, well, you want to check it for water, first off. So... Um, Again, I can't impress upon folks enough who are managing interior plants to go ahead and get a soil sleuth, some sort of soil probe. This is the best way to check to see if your plant needs water. If you check the soil with a soil probe and it's moist, your plant doesn't need water. You get a lot of questions. When do I water my plant? When do I water my plant? Well, the only way to know is to check the soil. So I'm gonna take our soil probe, our soil sleuth, give it a little turn back down in here and this guy's pretty moist yeah so I'm gonna wait a couple days on this yeah and it's it's, it's funny because most of the people they care too much for the plant and I can say 80% of the, the people out there overwater their plants and they see that the plant is starting to gel away stay away the plant is starting uh throwing jellos okay so uh, we're gonna start talking about the mic stick right now. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. We can compare it with the Rico real quick. Okay. So uh, today, mostly video, we're gonna focus and help you guys to see a difference in between the beautiful Majesty, the Kensia, and the Rika that we got it back here, and in the other corner, we got it. Um, so with the Majesty, uh, as you guys already hear, uh, it's from Madagascar. They like the, uh, the water, they love water. They were first found uh, close to the rivers and ponds, okay? Um, they need bright light, at least six hours a minimum, you know, bright light, so make sure you put it in a nice corner, okay? Um, easy to know if you're overwatering the plant, because it likes water, but it, it doesn't like mud, okay? So if you overwater the plant, it's gonna start yellowing. If it's Underwater, you're gonna have browns, okay? Really easy to spot. I think that's the easiest way to to uh, see the difference on the on the palm. Um, we got the beautiful quintia right next to it. What do you know about the quintia, Steve? Well, I, I just want to mention on the contrast here yep. is as far as light requirements go, is what you have to worry about when you're getting a palm and ordering it. Um, the Eureka here requires more light than the Majesty, and the Majesty requires more light than the Cantia. So uh, if, if you're in moderate light, you want to side on the, on the Kentia. The Kentia, I, admittedly, it's more expensive, uh, but it's worth it. Um, it's a slow grower. Um, these guys are, uh, are germinated off the coast of Australia and grown in Hawaii. Uh, so they've, uh, they've taken a long road here. However, it is my favorite plant, and I love the thing. It performs well. Um, does well in, uh, in lower light and get the Hawaiian version it's grown in uh, lava, rock. lava rock so there's very very uh, little chance you're gonna overwater this guy okay. uh, so and again high light less higher light and this is moderate light yeah. um, that so, can go in really dark corners right Steve uh, yeah, that, yeah. They, they, they yeah can it, it can go in a dark corner, but it's yeah. still going to need some light. So you can sustain this thing for, for years in moderate light. You know, if yep. you really want it to grow and, and, and take off, uh, you've got to get it in some, you got to get it next to a window, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Uh, so I, I find uh, a lot of folks are interested in these uh, in northern climates, uh, where you just may need to use something outside just during the summer. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit uh, lower price point. Yep. And uh, you can put it outside in an urn or somehow flank your doorway and have a nice tropical look coming into your yep. home or to your business. And that's a great way to go with that. Majesty uh, from all of them. Steve liked the Kintia. The Majesty for me, I think when they start growing and really showing off their character, you can see how they have that really crown on top because they don't grow bushier as the, as the Rika. The Rika will grow bushier and, and white, right? 
and then the man you see, you see is got that really nice, straight, and, and, and that long flow on the on the house. So it's a, it's a great plan. Uh, the Eureka, great, really, really high light. Um, we can see that uh, if you put it outside too, it will grab that yellowish color in the and the leaves, okay? Keep the jello off the plants, Joe. Yeah, I like the jello. I like the jello. Like <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's nice feeding, too. So, uh, I guess what else we were going to talk about out here? Well, I want to stage got, it. I want to stage it. Because, you know, I get the I get questions. A lot of questions. Um, about it. Yeah. There's folks that are selling plants online, and they'll put them in fancy planters and plant them up. Uh, but we like, uh, we're kind of uh, planter agnostic. And uh, you can get planters from us on our site, or you can get them from the, virtually thousands of other places. So uh, pick the planter, make sure it's sized right, but we want you to know how to take this presentation, hide all of this, and make it nice and look good in your home. So what we're gonna do is we got, let me have that planter. It's easier first to find the, the spot where you're gonna have the plant. Okay. Easier to carry to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stage this thing. Did we have? Uh, uh, Do we have a collar? A collar? Foam on. I need foam oh. collars. I can get you one. Okay. Bye, so, Joe. Hey, Joe. I'll get it. Okay. okay. Keith's okay. got the collar. Joe, you're the talent. <laughs> With your funky face you, uh, you. mask wearing. Over I always here. try. It. I, I always said that if you see me around on on, on the accounts or. or you know, anywhere you can come to me and ask me questions. I really don't mind. I really like helping people. I uh, normally spend my days on the Moffitt Hospital. I'm always around there. So, uh, uh, yeah, come by, help me out. Let's <laughs> grab a coffee, invite me a coffee. Love coffee. Okay. So the the objective here is to hide the relatively unattractive black or green or sometimes red grow pot. Don't want to see that. We want to put it in a nice planter. So pick out a planter that's sized right for your plant. We've, we've got the dimensions of the grow pot, got the dimensions of the planters on our site so you can tell which planter fits which grow pot. Um, and so this right here is the grow pot. Yep. And this uh, planter, as you can see, is a little bit more attractive than that. So what we want to do is we want to stage it in here. So the first thing I want to do Okay, so I'm gonna take my liner. I got it here for now. So we're staying away. And we want to get the grow pot, edge of the grow pot, below the lip of the planter. So this is too tall. You're gonna need, most likely gonna need some staging material. Right now I'm just using styrofoam. You can use anything laying around the house that you don't want to see anymore uh, to raise up the, the height of the grow pot to get it near flush with the edge of the planter. So that was too tall. I'm going to take one out, see how it fits. I don't know, that might still be a little too tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it is too tall. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no touching. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, that's better. This, uh, the edge of the grow pot is about an inch, inch and a half below the edge of the planter, so that's a good setup. So right now, we just stuck it back in there. I want to remind you, if you've got the planter sure system, you want to tuck those wicks down in the bottom of the liner. I'm doing that. All right. So we also sell foam collars, and you use the foam collar to stabilize the plant inside the planter. So all I'm going to do is take these guys, What size collar is that, Steve? Uh, what size collar is it? Yeah, the large and small size. This is the large. It says it's pliable. It gives me some room to navigate. So you can see I've got the pot stabilized down there in the planter. And what's that? Yeah, and a couple of uh, spaces. spaces here so I can see what's going on down in the liner. Right there. Okay, um, we have two options on the site for covering the soil, and so you can't see this. Uh, two kinds of moss, 
We've got the green mood moss, yep. which interior designers love. It's it's lush. Um, it's yeah, it's it's nice and green. Um, and we've got some um, gray moss. I'll show you in a second. So if you get the green mood moss, what you want to do is just stage this up around the base of the plant. Well, you do that, Steve. Can I ask you some question about yeah. the uh, Go ahead. moss? Yeah. So uh, a lot of people ask me if the moss is uh, toxic for their animals, their pets. No, there's there's no reported toxicity issues with the with the moss. Okay. So I, I'm not finding uh, any issues with pet, pet, pets. The pets. Pets around. And what about do you need to take care of uh, of the moss? Do you need to water the moss or just let it? Let it be like it is. Or... Okay, the moss is preserved moss, so it's been preserved with glycerin. Um, uh, however, it will dry out a little bit. And to keep it nice and supple, we do recommend a little misting with water maybe once a month, depending on how it dries okay, out. That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. 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 Another thing that I hear about the uh, Majestic plant is that they like humidity. So if you spray it like twice a week, uh, it's good for a plant. Is it true, Steve? Um, well, we're finding that uh, they can get dusty, and so uh, much of the missing goes on when you need to clean it. Okay. Um, anyway, the um, so there we went from a relatively ugly grow pot, uh, where you can see the liner now. This guy is set up to go on display anywhere in your home or in your office, um, out on your patio, screened in porch. It's ready to go. What do you like? Yeah, I like it. Uh, I... You want to show the difference between this and the gray moss? Uh, yeah, we okay. can do that. Okay. Uh, I got the gray moss back here. I hear that it's very useful having moss on top of the plant because it's keeping it more uh, moist and it can last longer without watering? Is it that? Some people say it this is, doesn't do up. This is paper. actually, uh, it's colored uh, wood shavings. So uh, it, it's pliable and can be stretched. A lot of people will take this stuff and squinch it up against the base of the plant, but what you want to do is you want to stretch this out over the entire surface here. And the objective is to hide Again, the grow pot and everything underneath it with something attractive and consistent looking. So that's on the on the people. If you like green moss, if you like green moss, that's on whoever. Right? It's it's just a personal preference. Thing. Personal. Okay. Um, the green moss is a little bit more expensive, uh, but this this stuff uh, does a great job for you. Mm -hmm. um, it's widely used in our interior business here in Tampa. Uh, most of the customers prefer this um, as a way to, uh, to moss and keep things consistent in their offices. That's good. You wanna yes. try to uh, compare the uh, Arikas on with the Kintia uh, right next to each other or? No, 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 I think, I think we're good with that. I think we're good with that. Um, wanna talk a little bit about cleaning? Yeah, I hear that you got uh, what about that egg? The egg. Oh, the egg. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you tell me about that egg. All right. So um, I normally get a lot of questions about how do I keep my plants looking really, really green. Let me get my spray bottle back here. Really clean and shiny. Uh, I always say that is a really grandma recipe uh, we normally use just water down so and if you want to add some uh, bromine alcohol in there it will help for the box disinfect the plants too it's gonna look good um, most of the people at home they don't know and they go out there and buy like really expensive product that some waxing for the leaves you know and with this formula that's how we would do it out here I think it's really easy Steve so, uh, uh, can I interrupt real quick? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Let's do two different levels here. Um, if you're just trying to keep the plant clean, um, a light, mild solution of soap and water and wiping it down is good. 
Uh, Joe mentioned the isopropyl alcohol. Um, if you suspect any pets, pests, can't get the pets and the pests right yeah. today. Uh, if you suspect any pests or you see any mealybug or mites, um, actually add the, the isopropyl alcohol on a yeah. bottle. So in a gallon, I think we're recommending... Um, Two, three ounces? Uh, it's four ounces of isopropyl alcohol, yeah. uh, one ounce of soap, dish soap, one and ounce, one ounce of vegetable oil. All right. So the vegetable oil will put a little bit of sheen on the plant, but for your basic needs, cleaning the plant, a little shot of, a little shot of soap there. I got the spray too. You can do it however you, you want. Can I borrow your rag, Joe? Can I, you sure? So mostly, two rags will do it. Start at the base of the leaf and work your way out. So you tug against it. And this guy is uh, a little dirty. It's a little dusty. Yeah. Yep. So you can zoom that in there. All I'm doing is stroking the leaf. Got a little bit of soap and then to actually, pull any dirt off. It does. It does get that really green color pop out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I really like that. Um, I do want to mention that a lot of people focus on cleaning the tops of the leaves, where of course dust will accumulate. However, the pests love to harbor underneath the leaf. So you want to make sure you clean both sides of the leaves. So I'm getting all the way down to the stem, stroking the petiole and pulling it up like that. Joe, if you want to talk about yeah. the spray. The spray, uh, I like using the spray this way because I first um, spray the whole plant first. I go in in the stem because that way we talk about the pest, right? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and um, yeah, this way we can just make sure we're going to go everywhere you know, get the plant. Uh, so I will spray it real quick completely. Uh, this is the way I do it. I think it's a little faster. But after that, after this step, I use the rags to get all the excess or all the dripping out of the plant like that. But I yeah, think it's- So with, with either method, if- Both you, are good. They're both good, but um, you're gonna get some drip on the floor. Yes. Um, control the drip a little bit if you just wanted to wipe it with a damp rag. Um, but you can see some of it's dripping off, so make sure you don't do this over a nice newly finished hardwood floor. Definitely. And here, um, we just being a little aggressive and a little messy because we got the cart, you know. Uh, but if you got it in a porch, you can do it too because, of course, it's going to go away. Uh, the only thing is just. Uh, shower. The only. Uh, <laughs> in the shower. In the oh, shower, shower. That, that helps too. Last time I, I recommend that one too. Um, the only thing is that if you got a plant in the porch, you can use the the solution, right, the spray, but just watch the straight sunlight because this is wax and it can burn the leaf and we don't want that. So it's really, it's really good to just, um, So uh, if you're adding the vegetable really oil to the spray solution, yep. it, it, it can amplify some of the, the sunlight. Um, so uh, you want to keep that out of direct sunlight immediately after uh, cleaning the plant. Yeah. So this way you can see already a difference on the plant. Um, you can do that uh, once a month or twice a month if you want to have it like it's really really clean. That's it's like water. You know, yeah, when does it need to be like water? water. Yeah. Uh, it needs to be watered when the soil's dry. Yeah. When does it need to be cleaned? Well, if the leaves are dirty, clean them. Uh, you know. I, yeah. I, I I would. I mean, we've got a service interval um, in our commercial accounts that we keep. So we're doing it every so often, regardless. Um, but if you got your plant at home and it's dirty, get the soapy solution, couple of rags, yeah. um, mix up some isopropyl alcohol in there if you want, and, uh, and go at it. And, uh, and actually, the plant is gonna enjoy it too, you know, so uh, it doesn't get plus, uh, cluster in the in the leaf. So it's gonna be better for a plant to actually. Uh, enjoy that sun or, or that bright light. So we've been calling this an ag. Um, aglaonema. But it's an aglaonema. Yeah. And Thank yes, you, Steve. Yeah. Um, and this is uh, the silverback collection. Yeah, silver um, it's characterized by the the nice um, light green on the uh, interior of the leaf and actually the <clears throat> the margins of the leaf uh, have a different uh, variegation pattern. Very, very interesting. So yeah. again, this is a very John's shaking his head. Your son and oh. his question. Tell him to stop asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
This one isn't very aer aerodynamic, Blake, so lay off. Um, but this is very easy. Again, these are great gift plans. Um, they need uh, very, very little um, little care and uh, light on the water. Yep. I right, like. I do on. like the. Uh, I do like the uh, um, pink or red aguanima, right? Or as you call the whole family of Chinese evergreens. Uh, a lot of people yep. know them by that name too. Um, I'm gonna clean up this monstera. The monstera that we see also. Okay. Um, the thing is, the other aguanimas. Uh, because they got that pigment, 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 pigmentation. Pigmentation. Thank you. Next to the thank pests. You. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, they require higher bright light. Okay. So silver bait is the easier to take care of. Um, with more bright light, uh, the Marians, uh, the red ag, uh, aglonema, they they definitely need more more light. Um, the monstera. Uh, lately, they're trending a lot, like the uh, fiddle leaf peak at home. Um, the difference is that the Monstera, she will get really, really wide. So it's really, a lot of people like them because of course, that beautiful leaf, it got, it call anyone attention. Um, but we gotta put in mind that it will go wide instead of high, okay? Unless you get some stock and put it like a like a vining, you know, going up somewhere in the wall, um, or as as cascading, they work too. But just put that in mind, okay? They require a lot of space. So Monstera, we're gonna do the same process, Steve. Real quick, if anybody's doing the stats on, uh, you know, which is the favorite plant, I'd say still, uh -huh. the fiddle leaf fig is the most popular among the baby boomers. It is, yeah. The millennials dig this. Yeah, th yeah, this so is trending a lot right yeah, now yeah, with the so new apps out there. If you are in, in Instagram, Facebook, yeah, uh, Monstera is out there a lot right so now. So for okay. those of you in the millennial generation, we'd like to thank you for your participation in the plant trend. <laughs> um, and if we can get this to you, let us know. Yeah, I'm a millennial. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure, thank you. <laughs> so in this way, again, we can just lightly spray over the top. The rack is already, is already wet, moist, right? Make sure you get the bottom. Yep. Yeah, if you yep. get the spray. Get so in this, in this case, I'm just gonna just wipe to the side. And really important, go underneath it because if you got any kind of pests uh, uh, going on in your plant, they normally go in the stem and underneath it. Normally, spider mite, they go, they do that a lot. Uh, Mealy bugs, they go inside normally, and when if you get to see the middle leaf on top, you definitely got a infestation. So just make sure it's really important to clean your plants at home, okay? Uh, what else what, can we well, see about here? The, the cleaning, you know, if you see pests, uh, certainly you want to wipe it off. Yeah. Um, but a regular cleaning regimen and you won't have pests. Definitely so not. The pests will stay off, will stay away. Uh, a, a clean healthy, actively grown pan is the best defense against any pests. Yeah, and I, I got inside my house right now around 20, 22 plants inside my home. Yeah, it sounds crazy, but it looked good. I got space. Um, and none of them because I clean them at least once a month. I, Steve, it depends. Steve likes me twice a month. Um, yeah, I, I don't have that kind of problem, okay? So uh, definitely really useful, easy step. Uh, take your five minutes with each day, with each plant, talk with it, uh, or each time you water, you know, just make sure you get in there, you got underneath it. Um, yeah, what else we got? Okay, well, um, we've got our Giganta up here. Um, it's a popular plant. Um, you can see it's got uh, lots of color popping out. Uh, this is uh, a lemon lime. Limelight? Limelight. Limelight. Excuse me. Limelight. Yeah. Got it wrong. Um, but you can see this is uh, a it's uh, a dracaena. Um, so because it has a little bit less uh, chlorophyll in the leaf, this guy requires a little light to keep this uh, neat uh, limey color. Um, but it's a great uh, low maintenance plant. It doesn't require a lot of water. Um, but it's uh, it's an awesome plant. So I mean, these are really. Uh, we talked about some really awesome gift plants up here. Um, so the uh, the Monstera, anything in the Janet Craig collection, 
Yeah. Uh, the Giganta, really, really easy plants. Yep. Um, normally people, they always lean towards like wood chip plants or palms um, or uh, really like kings in their homes. So any kind of plants will do a great gift. Okay, so don't, don't think like, oh, do I get the right plant or do I get any kind of plant that's beautiful. They're all different in character. Uh, so if you need more help or trying to uh, try to give plant or buy a plant for someone, uh, you can write us, we can reply, you can ask questions. We always gonna be for you guys. We do this for you guys. So always we're gonna be here, right Steve? That's what we're all about. So not only can we get you a beautiful plant, beautiful healthy plant, uh, get it to you safely anywhere in the country, uh, but we've got resources on our website and people on our staff ready to respond. Uh, if you've got any questions or um, just general maintenance on how to keep the plant healthy and grow it. As Beacon here, it's starting to uh, rain a little bit here in yeah. Tampa. We're protected in our greenhouse, but it might change the, uh, sound. the, the sound, sound quality. Yes, yeah. yeah, sound quality. Um, we've got... Um, I got one more question for you, Steve. Yeah. Is it right? I hear a rumor about the kinthia. Do they actually bloom? They throw a, they throw a bloom or a fruit? Okay. I hear so the lesson, the, the botany lesson, is we're dealing all with angiosperms. Okay. okay. Angiosperms are the, the, the all blooming plants. Um, but generally, if you put these plants in low light, okay. you don't drive enough photosynthesis for them to have the energy to produce fruit. Or produce fruit. Wild oh, oh, oh. So um, very rarely when you see one bloom. Uh, Monstera deliciosa is uh, it's. Species name uh, comes from uh, its fruit, uh, which is very sweet. Um, and if you give this thing lots of light, and you time. give it a trellis, and and time. time, and it grows up, the leaves will become large. It can bloom inside. Of these plants here, this is the most likely to bloom inside. Yeah. Okay, uh, so, we got about 15 minutes left. You got another question? I, I I think I'm good. I just want to you know participate with the people always. Um, Again, if you see me out in the field or you know somewhere in the Tampa Bay at around here, I'm always willing to go to you guys, try to help you. Uh, we got some different accounts that people come to me and always, you know, like, hey, can you give me five minutes of your time and help me? I can do that, I don't mind. I'm always, you know, we are here for you guys, again. Uh, so, questions, you can put, post them on Facebook, right? So other than members of my immediate family, we're taking questions. <laughs> you already know we're not right up there. Yeah. Anything? Well, it's delayed. Man. It's delayed. Oh. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So we're on a bit of a delay in case things get really crazy here in Tampa. It's just a signal. Yeah, it's getting cloudy. Um, Steve, do you own, uh, do you got some plants inside your home? Uh, I've got a couple of Dracaena Rickies and uh, they're um, part of the Reflexa family. We got them on my patio. Of course, here in Tampa, we have the benefit of having the environment. Uh, got lots of white birds growing around the patio. Okay. Um, I think the uh, the plant of choice by my wife now, sort of forced upon her by me, is a, a couple of uh, parlor plants. Parlor plants. Okay. Parlor okay. Plants. okay. Parlor yeah. Plants. So they're doing really well in our house. All right. I hear another uh, other than the fiddle leaf bee, the uh, monsteras. I hear that bromeliads are trending a lot and succulents for people. Um, uh, I don't know if it's okay that I can mention. You guys sometimes you work with some bowl, right? Decoration bowl sure. for hotels sure. or different. Yeah. Question. John's got a question. Do you question. clean the plants with a clockwise or counterclockwise rubbing motion? Uh, Whatever, it's easier for you. It depends if you're left or, or, or right. You know? Good answer. Right. right. Which, uh, George Costanza had an answer for that question. Yeah. So I guess that's on, on personal preference, you know. I, I use my both hands, so in this case, whatever you want. Whatever it's works not, for you. Let us know. Comment on us. It's okay? not a circular motion. It's a stroke motion. This is bad. Yeah. Okay. All right. So All right. Hey, we got Earth Day coming up on Wednesday. Celebrate. Uh, keep your social distancing. We're all going to get this through this thing. And if you need some plants to help your quarantine, call us. Put some green in your